Hello, it is Sunday, December 10th, 2023. I'm Chris Remond. Welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It is a Sunday crossword, which means we're solving a large jumbo. We're solving, well, those redundant, but we're solving a big uh, themed grid. And it's got a title, Political Punditry. So obviously, political puns are going to be the order of the day. I think it's safe to assume that, but we'll find out. And this is one of those days um, in which I'm on an extremely tight schedule, and that is always risky with a Sunday puzzle because these things are big. So let's hope it doesn't take me all too long. I'm going to try and move through this a, a bit more quickly than usual today if I can. So we'll see how that goes. In any case, this uh, hopefully slightly speedy Sunday edition of The Daily Solve has been brought to us by Laura Saxon, Victoria Rojishka, Kathleen Quinn, and as always, the indomitable Shoalmaster and the incredible Horan family. So thank you so much to the five of them, they are benefactors of the Daily Soul Patreon campaign. That means they directly support this channel and keep this whole thing going, for which I am very grateful. Thank you to them. Thank you to everybody who's a patron of the channel. And if you'd like to be one, you can head over to patreon.com slash daily solve or click the link in the description field underneath the video, where you can find all of the bonus videos available to patrons, um, as well as the Let's Check the Crosses mug. Those bonus videos should include this week's mini puzzle pseudo speed solve, but I've just not yet had time. It's been a um, busy, slightly busy weekend. So that will be up in the in soon. But anyway, look forward to that. Uh, in any case, uh, thank you to everybody who backs the Patreon campaign in any capacity. And thanks as well if you subscribe to the channel on YouTube. That's a big help. Do consider doing so. Finally, there's the Daily Solve Discord chat server you can join via description field link. Nice, friendly chat community. All right, let's get on to the crossword. This is a Sunday puzzle entitled Political Punditry by Zachary David Levy, who's constructed, I think, around half a dozen puzzles for the New York Times. And Jeff Chen, who's constructed, I think I said over 150 last time. Turns out this is his 150th. So congratulations to him on that extraordinary milestone. And uh, it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. So let's start solving, see if I can make my way through this in decent time. Whiskered Bottom Dweller. Uh, it's some sort of fish. I can't think what it is. I don't know. Uh, let's see. Workout focus informally. Could be a um, muscle nickname, maybe, or something. Tube traveler. Uh, the two things that come to mind to me here. One would be Brit, someone who who um, uses the tube, the underground system in you know, here in London, which is the metro, the, the subway system. Um, and that, as far as I know, is only really used in London. So it could be a Brit, but it also could be uh, an ovum, a traveler along the fallopian tube, which I think I've seen this pun used in that way once or twice before, not recently, but it could well be that. Let's see. What about this one? Musical feature in Swan Lake and Peter and the Wolf. Oboe, uh, oboe is very distinctive to me, especially from Peter and the Wolf. Oboe solo? That would make this ovum, potentially. Flat Earth. Mesa. Oh, no. Mesas? No, maybe not. I was thinking of a kind of flat geological formation. like a Well, let's try mesas and just see if I can confirm or deny it. Like Jabba the Hutt. Well, from uh, Return of the Jedi, Jabba the Hutt is a very obese character. All right. Highway that runs from Key West to Maine. Oh, it might be US-1. I... I've, I don't think I've ever driven on US-1, but it's a highway that runs along the east, you know, eastern seaboard of the US, so I, I bet that's it. I mean, it could be two. I don't remember how the numbering system works exactly. Someone once told me in a comment about the way evens and odds work and so on, but I, I don't remember. Subjects of some cautionary tales, no-nos, things you shouldn't do. If you went trekking, say, you... Went on some kind of, I don't know, adventure or something. You venture, oh yeah, venture. Ventured out? Ventured off? I don't know. Let's try this. This looks like Aetna. Yes, insurance giant acquired by CVS in 2018. Okay, well, I didn't know the thing about being acquired by CVS, but I recognize Aetna as the name of an insurance company. One way to wish. You could wish on a star or wish on a, is there another similar phrase? Not sure. Um, I'm having good luck with my guesses so far, though. What about this one? The fashion... Oh, right. Here's, here's, this will be a pun theme clue, I suspect. The fashion magazine's editor focused on fasteners in her something about issues because of, it's a magazine editor. The fashion med magazine's editor focused on fasteners in her 
something about back issues or something? Polit oh, political issues? No, but we, it's because I was thinking political, but that's literally what it says right here. So it's not going to be that. The fashion magazine. I don't know. I don't know. I shouldn't, I shouldn't just sit here trying to get that. AOL, e.g., an internet service provider. Is AOL still that? I don't even know. Um, I, I don't know. Do they still provide that service? Oh, and here we have Oboe S. It could be Oboe Solo. I'm going to try it and see. Leader of a flock. A pastor. So leader of a flock in a religious sense metaphorically. And then most wan, if your face is the most wan, it's palest, sort of drained of blood. Doctor who wrote, I like nonsense. It wakes up the brain cells. Dr. Seuss, presumably. Not a medical doctor, but there we have it. Um, rent could be tor or torn, I suppose. If you sort of rent something in two, you've torn it in two. But I don't know if it's tor or torn. Uh, what about this? event that might have mutton busting, a rodeo. There we go. Okay. I don't think I know what mutton busting is, but it sounds like it might happen at a rodeo, whatever it is. So there we go. Uh, Our Day Will Come, 1960, 1963, number one hit. Great. And then Ventured Out, presumably. This is went trekking. Family on TV's Smallville. Okay, right. Um, this is about Superman and his adoptive family. So Clark Kent, so it'd be the Kents. There we go. Strongly suspecting. If you're on to someone, you're maybe strongly suspecting them. I'm on to you. You might say, I'm strongly suspecting you. Brooding bunch. Hens. Hens could, could sort of brood. That seems plausible. Not Obviously not in the sense of brooding being kind of smoldering and angry, but um, you know, in the sense that, that animals would, would brood. Hockey fake. Oh, I think I know this. It's either deke or juke. I don't know if there's a distinction between those. There probably is, but I'm, I'm not knowledgeable enough to, about that topic to know. Let's see. What about this? Extreme lethargy. Sloth? Is there something else this could be? This looks like house. The sound engineer was obsessed with the... Well, it's not going to be Hausen, which is what would happen if this were torn. So I think it is house. And then rent is tor. So... This hockey fake, we don't know, but it probably ends in an E, Deke or Juke. And then the groundskeeper spent years studying groundskeeper. I'm not sure. Something about flora or agriculture or not agriculture, but gardening or I don't know. I can't think. Unagi or Inago. Those are eel. Oops. Um, and I, I don't actually know enough about Japanese to know if this refers to eel the animal or just eel in a culinary context or both. Well, I, I know it does include the culinary context, but I don't know if it also includes the sort of referring to a live animal. Kick back. So it could be to rest. I mean, I guess a kickback kick back could be a sort of payment made to someone in a slightly corrupt way. Um, but that which as a noun would be spelled as a single word, kickback. But as a verb, you could spell it with two different words. So it could still be that, but I bet it isn't. I bet it's just rest to kick back. Let's just see if we can confirm or deny that. Food critics asset, taste or palate? Palate would fit, unlike taste. I'm at your disposal. Use me. There we go. That's the thing you could say to mean that. Game divided into periods called chuckers. Polo, maybe? I don't actually know. I don't actually know, but I'm just four letters with an with an L there makes me think it might be that. Let's look at this cross. Online command denoted by an arrow inside a cloud upload. There we go. That's what that would be. Download. Often the arrow would be going the other way. So the hockey fake is a deke. Great. That's in there. Cry of frustration could be gah. Frustrated. Fortunately, I've not yet had cause to be in this in the soft. Going okay. Seaside retreat. Seaside retreat question mark. I don't know. That's interesting. So a seaside retreat without the question mark, you'd think a, I don't know, a holiday home or something, or, or maybe not a home, but maybe a, um, a resort or something like that. But this makes me retreat, makes me think a withdrawal or, a you know, someone fleeing or something like that. I'm not sure. Customer service assistant at times. A bot? No, this doesn't look right. Maybe this must not be ga. But this does look like something 
of the house, maybe? The sound engineer was obsessed with the somethings of the house. Speakers of the house. Right, there we go. There's my first identified political clue. So speaker of the house would be you know, speaker of the house of representatives, for instance, in the, in the U.S. legislature. But here we're referring to, uh, in a punny way, we're referring to the house speakers, the venues, uh, loudspeakers that the sound, the sound engineer would be obsessed with. There we go. Or I guess it could be their own home. I suppose it doesn't need to be the venue. Maybe by house, it means their own house. I don't know. Anyway, seaside retreat, retreat, ebb. There we go. The tide ebbs and flows. It ebbs. The tide recedes. It retreats back into the sort of away from the coast. So cry of frustration would be bah. There we go. Scrooge-like bah. Humbug there. Lead into service or sacrifice. Self-service or self-sacrifice are both phrases. So there we go. The veterinarian specialized in mending. Yeah, I don't know yet. Up to could be till until maybe. Could be. Let's look at the others around here. Something with a preview in a social media post, a URL or a pic. The coyotes on the NHL scoreboards. I don't, I have no clue. I don't even think I've heard of this team, <laughs> embarrassingly, but yeah, I'll have to move on. Beverage brand with antioxidants. Oh, palm, maybe? It's pomegranate juice? That seems like the kind of thing that would advertise itself as having antioxidants. I'm not sure, but it would fit in three letters, which is one of the reasons I'm saying it. So who are the coyotes? On uh, I, I really don't know what this is. I mean, palm or till, one of those could easily be wrong. Up to... I don't know. Maybe I should delete till. I don't, I can't think of a good alternative, but I'm also not confident it's the answer. Um, okay. What else? Hubbub, commotion or fraca, maybe fraca. Let's see. Blank stick pen brand. I don't think, is there something called a flick stick maybe with an IC like this? That is vaguely familiar to me. Japanese maker of watches and mobile phones. Oh, um, Casio, do they make mobile phones? Do they make watches either? Actually, that might be wrong. I think of them as making electronic musical keyboards, but I wouldn't be surprised if they made all sorts of things. Goddess, de oh yeah, okay. Goddess depicted at the foot of King Tut's coffin, Isis. There we go, great, okay. So then goes for, opts for, good, okay, that's correct, that's correct. Big name in filters. I'm surprised by that flick pen thing. Big name in filters Brita filters, water filters for drinking water. Virgil at the OK Corral. Uh, Virgil Earp, relative of Wyatt Earp, so famous law lawman in the Old West. The groundskeeper spent years studying grass something, maybe? Singer Mars, Bruno Mars, there we go. Velodrome vehicles, race bicycles? Uh, Besson, who directed The Fifth Element, Luc Besson, there we go. It is maybe race then. It's the film director, of course. And then Blank Rock, genre for T-Rex. Oh, I don't know this band very well. Is it Glam Rock? That sounds right, basically. Uh, inner Self in Jungian Philosophy. Right, okay, I'm not very well versed in Jungian Philosophy. Let's see. Don't have a great answer there. So, let, But let's try race bicycle oh no it's not that okay never mind uh okay well what about this french term of endearment mon my something mon uh i can't think well actually it could be mon ami my friend i was i was looking for something a bit more romantic maybe for term of endearment but it doesn't need to be could be this let's look at the crosses and see blank had it i've had it there we go okay then maybe that is right then in and between, amongst, that sounds right to me. Oh, anima, that sounds vaguely familiar, inner self. Salts. Salts obviously could be seasoned something with salt, but it, salt, but it could also be, you could refer to a, a kind of weathered old sea dog as a salt, you know, that kind of thing, uh, sailor, but 
I don't know if that's right. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's not. <laughs> orange sources, groves, orange groves where they're grown. There we go. Oh, right. Anima, sorry, with an I. I don't know why. Why did I have an E there? That was weird. Racing. Oh, I, yeah, I must have just typed that wrong. It was weird. Anyway, velodrome vehicles, racing bikes. There we go. There we go. I was on the right track. I just didn't think of the proper phrase. It's done in barrels. You could barrel age whiskey or something, you know, all sorts of different things. Secret clique could be a cabal, maybe, kind of secretive group. What a haggler hopes to pay. You haggle because you're hoping to get the price down. To stave off uh, disaster could be to avert disaster. And if one swelters in a hot area, one bakes. So the carpenter measured twice for the ideal cabinet. Oh, right. So this is a pun referring to a political cabinet. Cabinet position, maybe? Yeah, I, I like that. I think that's probably right. So we've got two of these now. Speakers of the house and cabinet position presidential cabinet, for instance. Company acquired by Morgan Stanley in, in 2020. Um, E-Trade, I, maybe? I mean, they're both financial, they're both sort of investment firms of various types, so could be. Let's see. Having needles as a cactus. Spiny? Is that a kind of valid word for that? Probably it is. Salted blank. Oh, no, but it isn't in this case. Because, oh, no, 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 it is. Never mind. Never mind. I thought salted rim, a margarita option, you know, salt around the rim of the glass. And then I thought that doesn't work with his eye. I don't know why I thought that. I thought it needed to be an R. It doesn't. R is already there. So rim is fine. Muscat native would be an Omani, a resident of Oman. Okay, so the paid escort was fined for... A national uh, something, maybe? National? I don't know. I'm, I'm, this is a really vague guessing here, so let's see if it if it works. Winter hours in Chi-Town. This is Chicago. I don't think this is right. Winter hours. Uh, oops. Uh, winter hours. Da uh, is it daylight? No, is it central daylight time? CDT? Is that, is that what it is? Not actually sure about that. Let's, I mean, it probably ends with T regardless. Exchanged words. Oh, this isn't right. Maybe spined rather than spiny, having needles. Exchanged words, edited, right. You swap, swap some words around, you edited a text. How subway cars are packed during rush hour. End, oh wait, no. I was going to say end to end, but that doesn't work with this at all. Uh, how subway cars are packed during rush hour. people packed together. I don't know. I can't think what this is. I'm, I might have something wrong here. Spined, maybe? Spiked. No, that doesn't help with this. This has got to be an E. E-Trade, Omani. Oh, this must not be CDT. Okay, so that's been wrong. I guess. I don't know. How subway cars are packed during rush hour. Densely. There we go. Oh, something standard time. Central standard time, maybe. The paid escort was fined for Oh, I can't see it. Undershirt, maybe. A tee, a t-shirt. If you're tired. Oh, something a, a cliche, a sort of old cliche it could be a tired cliche. There we go. So an act of Congress, right? Okay. So there we go. Prostitution, I guess, is what's being um referred to here in one sense and in the other sense an act of congress a law that's been passed through the legislature so there we go um all right dicey is iffy something is up in the air foe in the elder scrolls video games uh these are the this is the open world bethesda role-playing game series that includes games like skyrim and oblivion um i don't even remember that there were orcs in those but i guess there i guess there are Okay, neophyte informally is a noob, a newbie, a new player, or newcomer to something. Natural hairstyles informally could be froze, afros, and small cut could be a, a not a, I was going to say a slit, but that doesn't fit with this. So what about this? Place of birth, education, work history, e.g. Biodata, maybe? 
I'm not sure that's right. Melted mess could be goo. Things indicated by yellow signage. Probably ends with an S. I'm not sure. I'm not sure about biodata as a, as the accurate answer. Analogy works. Words. All right. Well, maybe I don't know. Maybe it is. Um, you know, you could say A is to B as X is to Y. So is to is a part of a sort of standard analogy formation. And then pronto could be do it quickly, ASAP, as soon as possible. And like some uh, rehab, post-operative, you might have to rehabilitate after some kind of operation. So there we go. Oh, so the small cut is a snip. I don't know why that was elusive, but there we go. We have it now. Things indicated by yellow signage. I don't know. Where one might store sheet music. Oh, piano seat. Yeah, piano seats often have... Um, you know, they, they're, they're, they have lids you can open up and store music in there or other things, I guess. Extreme lethargy. Oh, so, um, I keep thinking of sort of soporific. Like a soper, is that used as a noun? Golf champ McElroy or McIlroy, I haven't, I haven't a clue. Uh, So-called all-father of myth, Odin, the all-father in Norse mythology. There we go. Courtroom affirmation. I do, if you swear to tell the truth, for instance. Uh, Rory, maybe this is, McElroy. The weary general sat in his something chair. This could then indeed be Rory. What would that be? Niche. Something's niche. It's kind of... Oh, no, no, no. It's not as an adjective. It's a, it's a noun. Something could be in a niche. It could be in a cranny, maybe. A little, you know, nook or cranny. A little small area, narrow area, perhaps. Things indicated by yellow signage are hazards, right? Okay, road hazards could be indicated by yellow signage. There we go. So Emmy winner Aduba. Do I know this? I'm not sure. I think I've encountered, uh, you know, I think I'm like vaguely aware of this person, but I can't, I can't, I'm not sure about the first letter. Grand finale, grand crew. So that's referring to a, you know, a grand sort of wine vintage. And then Uzo Duba, there we go. Okay, great. So the vitamin shop competitor, GNC, they sell vitamins and supplements and things. Instrument heard at the conclusion of Bohemian Rhapsody is a big gong, famously, is the last note played, I suppose, in that in that queen, that great queen song. Fifth brightest, fifth brightest star in the night sky. Not sure. Race in H.G. Wells, the time machine, the Eloy. Um... Yeah, the protagonist meets these various uh, sort of distantly related to human species. And the Eloi, I think, were the kind of intelligent but very sort of fragile species, as I recall. Chinese dynasty, Tang dynasty, could be Ming. The weary general sat in his rocking chair. That's not political. His, oh, this doesn't look right either. Something O-N maybe, or I-N? What would work here? Okay, I need to find something else. Butter bit, a pat of butter, a little bit of butter. Reason to remove metal accessories. An MRI for a magnetic, you would not want to be wearing metal in an MRI. A magnetic resonance imagery scan. Ob uh, obliques, e.g. Um, not sure, what about this? Item of clothing patented by Mary Phelps Jacob in 1914. Uh, must have been a bra. That would fit uh, perfectly. I guess, I guess the, I don't know. I guess I don't know enough about the timeline to know, but it seems believable. Obliques, e.g. are, oh, abs, muscles. Example, so the e.g. just meaning, you know, an example of the thing. The weary general, general sat in his camp campaign chair. There we go. It is AGN there. All right, great. So campaign chair, I see. So general on a military campaign, but then obviously in a political campaign, you could have a chairperson running your campaign. All right. Chinese dynasty. Um, right. Okay. So this hasn't narrowed it down actually from what I already was guessing. Uh, Riga is that, that's a, that's a star, isn't it? No. Am I, am I confusing <laughs> Riga with R Rigel maybe or something? Vega. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. So here we have movement, probably. The groundskeeper spent years studying grassroots movement. There we go. So grassroots in a sort of bottom-up political sense, but also obviously the roots of grass that a groundskeeper might study. 
So here we have the Ming dynasty, presumably an ex-giant Manning, right? Okay, so I have heard of Eli Manning. There we go, NFL player. And business card abbreviation here, we have kind of milk, oat milk. And encouraging shout could be ole at a football match, maybe. And then soft powder is talc. Famously very soft, soft. And then business card abbreviation would be tell for telephone number. Great. All right. Little old me, question mark. Moi, maybe, or who? Maybe moi that's used in a kind of faux, surprised sense. Plot device for many a soap opera. Coma, a character falls into a coma. Convenient way for an actor to uh, take a break from the show for a while. Uh, eccentric could be a cook, maybe. Someone who's a bit, um, I don't know, lost in their own world, perhaps. Relative of camembert. Uh, brie, the French cheese. And obnoxious sort could be a boar. Someone who's, you know, sort of, I don't know, a bit rude. Oh, uh, wrath could be ire, anger. And then the veterinarian specialized in mending. So, oh, interesting. Either this is Locke or this is Locke. Oh, no, no, no. Veterinarian. For some reason in my mind, I didn't, I don't know. wasn't thinking about veterinarians. So I was thinking about something else, the locksmith for some reason. Anyway, the veterinarian specialized in mending. I, don't, I just don't know. I don't know. I must have something wrong. This must not be palm. Okay. Because you wouldn't have CKBM even, even split between multiple words. Coat for a cookout. A bib? Oh, right. Okay, this isn't fraca. Uh, you wear a bib to catch, you know, barbecue sauce or whatever. So hubbub. A flap up? Uh, that's not really a word. Physique slangly. One's bod, maybe. And the veterinarian specialized in mending. La okay, I think this maybe isn't bib. Lame duck bills. Wow, that's a good pun. <laughs> so lame duck bills. So the veterinarian specialized in mending duck bills that are lame. But politically, you could pass a bill in a lame duck session of Congress, for instance, if a sort of a you know president is on the way out or something, um, because they've reached the end of their second term, and that's that's the phenomenon called lame duck president. Or I guess maybe even if they're not at the end of their second term, if they have already been voted out of office but not have not yet concluded their term, I guess that's lame duck session as well. So you could be passing a bill through Congress in a lame duck session. Very clever pun. Okay. So then, oh, well, what does that make this then? Coat for a cookout. Oh, a rub, a coat on the meat. So a dry rub, for instance. Okay, there we go. Name hidden in I smell a rat. Okay, well, we can just look and find it. It's Lara. There we go. Great. Easy enough. So hubbub is flavor? No. Surely not. What, is, what would that mean? Just happened to mention some famous people. Drop names. There we go. Uh, hubbub, yeah, I guess it, is it flavor? I don't know, I can't see why it is. Bump on a log, say. A nub, on a sort of on a, you know, just a wooden kind of nub, maybe. Things with keys. Oh, I'm not sure. Uh, whiskered bottom dweller, right. Oh, mud, mud something. Mud cat? Mud, I don't, I can't think. But I'm fairly sure this, this animal's name is going to start with mud. Polite term of address, ma'am. There we go. Things with keys. Maps. Okay, right. So um, I guess this could mean either keys in the sort of land formation sense, like, you know, little sort of islands, or it could mean keys as in a, a legend that shows you what symbols on the map are going to mean. Although I think you usually call that a legend on a map. Anyway, whatever. It's, it's, it's a valid answer. Anyway, where Carol Burnett studied theater arts for short. Uh, UCLA, probably. That's a really big um, school for the performing arts. So it could be. Uh, whiskered bottom dweller, right? Mud something. BOGO or YOLO? Those are acronyms, but we're only referring to one of them. So either one is an acronym. And then the club's bouncer earned a living along eat, consume. There we go. Director Lee Ongli is a film director. An eye for an eye, say, 
So trading an eye, body part for an eye, the yes. What would that be? Tra an eye for an eye. I don't know. A mud cat or mud cap, do I think? I think it's mud cat. An eye for an eye, say. Typo. All right. Very clever. Okay, it was mud cat. So the club's bouncer earned a living a long... I'm not sure. Whiskey ingredient. Malt. You know, like a single malt whiskey, for instance. And then organization overseeing workers' well-being. Oh, no, it isn't. It isn't. Sorry, it's mash. There we go. There we go. Okay. So organization overseeing workers' well-being is OSHA, which is the federal, U.S. federal government's occupational workplace safety um, agency. And then P to Plato would be uh, Rho in the Greek alphabet. The uh, fashion magazine's editor focused on fasteners in her... Hot button issues, right, okay. Her hot button issues, her issues all about the, only the hottest buttons. And then of course, in political coverage, hot button issue refers to a sort of controversial topic. Beverage brand with antioxidants is, I don't recognize this, something with a preview in a social media post, a URL, okay. I think that was one of my guesses. Up to is till, all right, okay, so what is this? Oh, Arizona, oh, Arizona coyotes maybe buy beverage brands with antioxidants. I don't recognize this at all, but I don't have a better guess for this. So I'll leave it in. If I get the puzzle wrong, I'll remember that's the first place to check. Treatment site, a spa maybe, spa treatments. Let's just try it and see. Blank Biol maybe, Olympic figure skating gold medalist. I do not know. Summer cooler, an ice pop maybe to cool you down. Ice popsicle. Kirsten of 1995's Jumanji. Um, I think I saw that you know, probably about when it came out, but I don't remember anyone in it other than Robin Williams, but it must have been Kirsten Dunst. Uh, 19 down for a cleanup hitter, and 19 down says C9 down, right. So, I don't know. Baseball, presumably related. A uh, hole puncher could be an all. You could punch a hole in leather, say, with an all. And low island, oh, right. Maybe that's the key. No, because we had that thing about keys in, on, on a map, so I don't think it'll be that. A K? K C A Y? Workout focus and for Yeah, okay, I think maybe it is because workout focus could be cardio, cardio exercise, you know, gets your heart going. And 10 spot is a, oh, oh, a saw buck. I think that's what it, it's a nickname for a $10 bill. Is that, is that right? I think it is. Um, what have I not looked at yet? Oh, I've looked at all of these actually. So, oh, along party lines, the club bouncer earned a living along party lines, Lit literally letting people into a party or a club who are standing in a queue in a line. There we go. Very good. So um, here we have stat and then C9 down. Uh, stat for a cleanup hitter would be an RBI in baseball. There we go. Okay. So I think we've seen everything else. And then uh, here we have Oksana Bayul, Olympic figure skating gold medals. And great, great. There we go. No, I didn't get it wrong. Okay. Do I think this is wrong? Ari. By. Up to. Hmm. Problem is, I said I'd go here first, but I don't have any better ideas. Okay, because I don't have very much time today, I'm going to skim this over. Um, myself silently just to make it go faster, but I'm not going to make you watch it. So I'll edit it out if it takes more than, I don't know, a minute. Okay. I just got down to hubba being flammer and realized I never reconsidered this. I thought it was going to be flavor maybe, which didn't make any sense to me, but at least it was a word, but no, I never looked back at it after entering consume and flammer isn't a word. So it must not be flick stick, but click stick which would make sense because you sort of click pens and then a hubbub is a clamor, which makes perfect sense. It's a noise. So Good. Okay. That was the Sunday crossword. And uh, even even trying to go quickly, it still took half an hour. That is just what happens on the Sunday puzzles. Um, I mean, obviously talking through it is just going to result in, in it taking longer, but that's how it goes. That's the point of the series. So that was the Sunday crossword. Let's quickly look over our theme and then I'm going to wrap this video up. So we had a really nice collection of political punditry. Very nice pun in itself in the puzzle uh, title. So we had the club's bouncer who earned a living along party lines. We had the fashion magazine's editor focused on focusing on fasteners in her hot button issues. The veterinarian who specialized in mending lame duck bills. The sound engineer who was obsessed with the speakers of the house. 
The groundskeeper spent years studying grassroots movement, uh, while the weary general sat in his campaign chair. The carpenter measured twice for the ideal cabinet position, and finally the paid escort was fined for an act of Congress. So very nice. We had quite a few of these. I mean, yeah, the, the puzzle was wait, eight, maybe, was just packed with these bits of political punditry. Very good. And a nice Sunday puzzle throughout the rest. And a nice varied, varied fill, not too, uh, not too, um, all too challenging for the Sunday. Good midweek difficulty, I think. And there we had it. Let me know how you fared with this puzzle in the comments or the Daily Solve Discord chat server. Always curious to know. I'll be back tomorrow for the much quicker and simpler Monday puzzle. Do join me then. But until that point, please do have an excellent remainder of your Sunday. Take care. Mm-hmm.